Muses of Mythology is a spoiler-heavy podcast. That's an understatement. We're going to discuss not just the events of this book, but the Rydenverse as a whole, and really anything that we feel is relevant. You can find full spoiler warnings in the show notes. I need to pull up my notes on my computer because I have some links I need to drop in the chat for y'all to uh, observe. Is it a BuzzFeed, which river god are you? Oh, that'd be so good. We (laughs) should make that. Uh, No. There's only like four to choose from, so it's not hard. (laughs) I don't identify with the bull. Welcome to Muses of Mythology, a podcast where we explore how ancient myths become part of modern pop culture through the lens of Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympian series. This is Story 72, River Gods. I'm your co-host and podcasting muse, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, DJ. How's everybody doing today? I am the muse of hygiene. Hygiene? Gotta, I... gotta be clean, gotta be squeaky. That's fair. I definitely thought that was going to end in hijinks, and I was unclear on the relation, <laughs> but hygiene does make more sense. Hygiene. Hygiene. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's go muse around the garden for a bit. DJ, look what I just found. I see that. That's amazing. Yes. Isn't it? They're so beautiful. I'm so happy. We got keychains, guys. We've got keychains and holographic stickers yep Mm -hmm. they look absolutely amazing i have the sticker on my computer Mm -hmm. and a keychain on my keys me too it is uh new merch new merch new merch if you're listening to it it is available today on halloween and if you're listening to it later it's probably still available most likely if you did not know we do have merch usually stickers but also a button pin and now we have the holographic sticker which features our bunker nine patreon art done by rampa coca Mm-hmm. And we have a keychain version of our Don't Be Like Zeus design. Yeah, sticker. Uh, yeah, which was done by Becca Rupert. You can check out all the merch we have over on our website. Yes, we have a website. Yeah. It's musesofmythology.com. There's a shop feature. Free shipping for everything, by the yeah. way. We've adjusted those. So it's free shipping for everything. Oh, except for the pins. Technically. Which you'll hear more about actually at the end of this episode. Yes. But they're more expensive to ship. So the shipping is actually included in the cost of the pin. But everything else will fit in an envelope just fine. So Mm -hmm. Go to our website, buy our stuff. We're pretty proud of this merch, and it's kind of awesome that we even have merch, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought this three years ago. Yeah, thank you guys so much, and um, on to the show. Hey, DJ, guess what? How's it going? Uh, It's going good. That's not how we... (laughs) (laughs) That's not the response I was looking for. Hey, DJ, guess what? Well, how's it going? Well, okay. Well, it's going is that I feel like up at the top, we should let listeners know that in this episode, we will be discussing Chalice of the Gods. That we will, yeah. we will. So, there will be spoilers for Percy Jackson spoilers. and the Olympians, Chalice We're of the Gods. We're going to be discussing a one scene from Percy Jackson and the Olympians, book six, The Chalice of the Gods, because absolutely. it is related to our topic. When we get into that conversation fully, we will absolutely be like, hey, heads up. So if you want to just hit that skip button or if you want to skip this episode entirely until you've read it, listeners, we totally understand. That's why we're talking about it now. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we are talking about it before we even introduce our guest. (laughs) Today, we are joined by incredible artists. The mastermind behind Disney Beans. You have seen their merch. I have worn their merch. Disney Beans, but you can call them Brie or Beans. Hello. (laughs) Hey, guys. How's it going? It's your girl Beans here. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited. I've never done anything like this before. So this is the first in the fandom Beans for me. (laughs) I'm so delighted that we snatched you up first. I'm shocked that no one else is like, oh, we should invite Beans on. Like, I was like, no. I have been asked, but it's never like been followed through with, at least Um, not yet. So maybe this will start the whole... um, Mm -hmm you know, chain reaction yeah. mm-hmm, of guest mm-hmm. pods for me. So I'm, I'm great at follow through. So thank you so much for validating me. Yeah. And I, I thank you so much for ordering merch for me. Like I yeah. sit here in my office making all of my shirts and my stickers and just everything that I have on my website is made by me. So 
Oh, Every so order good. is like so special to me. So thank you. Yay. Yeah, for uh, listeners, you won't know this. Uh, so I'm going to tell you this. Right now, Beans is wearing one of their Camp Half-Blood long sleeves with the emblem. It's so good. So much better than, oh, with the words on the side. Yes, and- the sleeve has the text Camp Half-Blood. It's super cool. You can see it on Instagram or my website. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also, I spy a metal Percy Jackson camp necklace. Yes. So stainless steel <laughs> beads and I make the necklace cord out of like wax coated string. It's very so comfortable. It, it is one. super That's comfortable. How I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So it has like these double knot closures and I saw in the, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but Percy Jackson trailer for the Disney mm-hmm. plus show. It also has these double knot closures <gasps> of the necklace. And I was like, perfect. So that's wow, uh, if, it's canon. <laughs> it's canon. Yeah, if only the uh, shirt design on the show was half as good as yours. Oh, and stop. That is, <laughs> and that is all we will say about the show. It could be a whole other podcast. Yes. <laughs> but for now, I will just say, if you want a good Percy Jackson shirt, you should order from, from Disbeans because I wore mine to Epcot and it was incredible. Yeah. I got speaking of that Italy. day that you were in Epcot, I was in Magic Kingdom wearing the <gasps> exact same shirt. What? And I was like, I tell my husband, we have to go park hop to find her because I've oh never my had God. my shirt in the same place like at one time. So I was I we never wound up I going. Oh, I would have uh, if you had told me that I've been like, yes, no, come, come. I'm well, next you. time you, you plan a Disney trip and you know me, I'm Disney adult here. Let me know, and we'll we'll Absolutely. do a Percy Jackson themed trip for sure. I know I'm over here like Percy Jackson World Wind. I know the show's not even out yet, but it's obviously going to be a huge success. And oh, River yes. Country, you're just sitting there on River Country Land, just bulldoze it and build some cabins. Let's go. That's what I'm saying. Fort Wilderness, so, just convert them to yes. cabins one through twelve, thirteen. Exactly. I guess <laughs> all of them. <laughs> uh, speaking of cabins. Uh, we haven't done this in a while, but you gave us some uh, very fun uh, fun fact about you before we started, so I'm going to do it now. Do you want to tell us who your godly parent is? Well, so I think I might have two. So mm-hmm. first and foremost, if we're going like the main 12 Greek gods and goddesses, I am a daughter of Poseidon. Through and through, I love the beach, the ocean. I just am on whatever frequency that is. I go downtown near the river, near the water, like every Friday night just to hang Oh. And I try to get to the beach as often as possible. It's kind of hard being an adult and all. Mm-hmm. And then my other godly parent would be, and I can't remember his name, so you have to help me out, but he's oh, the god of beans. Yeah. The, just listening to your podcast a couple, you know, the couple podcasts ago when you're talking mm-hmm. about Demeter and how Demeter did not invent beans or find beans, mm-hmm. I was laughing so hard because I was like, that guy, whoever he is that discovered beans, that is my godly parent. It uh, looks like Siamedes is how we're going to decide yes. that's pronounced for this moment. <laughs> yeah. However you might think to say it, but yeah. definitely I just, the whole beans thing is a couple different reasons why I go by beans. When I was younger and still to this day, I love pinto beans. I just ah. like eating beans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then um, I've developed a really strong love for coffee. So coffee beans that's so and charming. Disney, it's all mm-hmm. part of the brand. So it's Perfect. just, it's just who I am. Can't apologize. We shouldn't apologize. Never apologize. Uh, unfortunately, for this episode, we are not going on the bean track. We are going to hang out in the Poseidon ocean water track. Uh, Absolutely. Because we're talking about river gods. Yeah. Usually, I'd be like, why'd you pick this episode? But I think you've already uh, stated that <laughs> very clearly. So let's, yeah, just absolutely. Get, let's just get into it. Hey, DJ. What's up? What's up with the river gods in the Percy Jackson books? Well, I know they were uh, the gods of the river Hudson in the West. Mm-mm. I'm what's, just saying no because we have that? listeners from New York City area who will text me immediately if I don't instantly okay, correct. Okay, then what's the other one? I know it's Hudson and something. It's the East River. East. That's so you were close, was. but there I was, was just like, cardinal Tim direction. O'Connor and Robert Gamer are going to call me personally. <laughs> God forbid I get the opposite cardinal direction, guys. <laughs> In New York? Yeah, DJ. God forbid. The streets are numbered. Um, Why are you getting lost in New York? The streets are numbered. <laughs> they are not happy with the state of their rivers because they are quite filthy. Mm-hmm. Nobody recommends swimming in those guys. Mm-mm. 
Percy tries to make a deal with them by giving them half a sand dollar, and they agree. And the sand dollar makes the waters just like 1% cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> I don't quite that, understand uh, that. That's something I definitely wanted to touch on. Yeah, it's during the, the Battle of Manhattan, and Crotus's forces are crossing the river, so Percy pays off the the river gods to sink the the ships so they don't cross which is is great i love the creative problem solving on the behalf of percy jackson i don't uh, there's no but there it felt like there was but no i actually just love everything about those scenes <laughs> Diz, they're, they're a lot of fun they're, it's, it's a yeah. very good time i love uh percy interacting with water deities it's always a just a fun dynamic they hate him so much every time. Yeah, you, well, you can never tell if it's going to be they hate him so much or they like fake like him to try to get in the good graces of Poseidon or they do just kind of enjoy hanging around. <laughs> yeah. It's always it's always a toss up. It's always a fun time. I do love how there's one of the things when Percy jumps in there, he's thinking about how like he doesn't even think he'll get the river's attention because they're gods. So why would they pay attention? But he starts shouting insults at them. I heard your skies are so polluted you're embarrassed to show your faces. Is that true? <laughs> I heard the East River is more toxic, but Hudson smell, smells worse. Or is that the other way around? It's like... I wouldn't take a swim in either one, bud. Yeah. For real. Yeah. He's, uh, he's like, I was afraid I miscalculated the insults. What if they just blasted me without showing themselves? But these were New York River gods. I figured their instinct would just be get in my face. And yeah, we had the two River gods show up. I think, what is it? One looks like a dude dressed in rags and seaweed with a chainmail coat made of bottle caps and plastic six-pack holders. Cut the six-pack holders up. I shouldn't have to say this, but I feel like if you use cans that have the plastic six-pack ring, cut them up. At this point, up. it's just domestic. Like I, I stock beers for a living. At this point, the only beers like left with those plastic things, even like for the most part, mm-hmm. I guess like Powerade and the Gatorade still have it for their eight-packs. But the only beers with it are like the domestic Miller and Coors Light, as well as like you know those kinds of brands. And so and like all the too. all the yeah all the craft ones use these fancy new plastic ones that are just like plastic on top. There's no way a turtle can get in there. Yeah, it's like it's like people uh, didn't all grow up with that picture book about the sea turtle who gets trapped in know, a crazy. ring. I can't believe. So there's there's your PSA for today. Cut them up. Uh, and this one is that what is that one hudson and then the east river is a seal he looks like a (laughs) telekin his face is wolfish his body was vaguely like a seal slick black with flipper hands and feet his eyes glowed radiation green uh because as you said dj they are very polluted they are very polluted those rivers had a number on them before the government stepped in (laughs) Yeah, it is. Ooh, it is a thing. How this is like the first time we've met river gods proper. We've seen a lot of naiads and nereids. I guess it's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ocean there was gods, no obviously. river god after he jumped in that one from the arch. No, right? he saw mm-hmm. the nereids. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought that was a yeah. naiad sent by um Poseidon. Oh, yes, that's right, because she's salt water. She can't be so up fresh water. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So being the first display, how do we feel about these figures? I love them. They're fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I personally just like how Percy's first instinct was like, let's just insult them and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Like, no thought whatsoever. Not a Not a thought in his head. Just. No, our boy's getting, he's instantly gotten real used to having the curse of Achilles. Like, oh yeah, they, uh, they try to, they try to fuck him up and it doesn't work. And they're like, oh, I see curse of Achilles. All right. Yeah. So. And he's so in his element too, that it's like, yeah. why even try anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, like this, I don't know if these gods would actually win against Percy at this point in time. <laughs> Oh, no. No, they yeah. wouldn't have. Uh, he no beat Hades shot. in fisticuffs. So. He beat Hades. He goes on to beat the shit out of Hyperion. Like, there's no chance. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's hyped up, man. He is mm-hmm. just jacked on that, that Styx water. He's that all jacked Styx up water, on Mountain that Dew. That Baja Blast Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> 
He cut up the rings, though, before he, he did. While well, you know. he was down there. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. You, I could actually just, I would love fan art of Percy just cutting the rings on the Hudson River. Just like, let me just, let me just get those for Yeah, let me just add that to my list of, like, With ideas to draw. Just, oh, yeah, you, you can do art. <laughs> I can't. You actually do art. <laughs> That was the first and foremost for me was like I was a fan artist and then it somehow using his water powers to pin the water god be like just hold on dude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like an we need more fan art of Percy just being super aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Super aggressive, but like with environmental things like just sea turtles. <laughs> Calm down. It'll be fine. Yeah, like he's got plastic straws and he's trying to stab the river gods, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Stop letting me straw up his nose. <laughs> <laughs> When yeah. did Percy get the sand dollar? Was that in the fourth book or was that at the beginning of this book? I feel like I just read up on this and now I can't remember. <laughs> but like shop related stuff, I had to look it up because I started including little sand dollar charms with the necklaces in oh. case people wanted to put them on the necklaces. Yeah. And I do want to say it's in the fifth book. Okay. Right. Like, yeah. He talks about Poseidon not being very helpful. I'm probably says- wrong though. My he memory gets it of in battle <laughs> at towards the end. Oh, uh, Percy okay. Percy receives a sand dollar. His fifteenth birthday gift from Poseidon. Not knowing when or how he was supposed to use it, Percy adds it to his camp necklace. That's right. He because it's at the party, right? I have no idea. That's just what it says here. I do remember just him trying to use it in the vending machine at school lunch, and like it didn't work, and he was really disappointed. Yes, that's I about, love that. He's like, Maybe that's I'll about the only thing here? I remember about the sand dollar. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I think it is. I think he mentions having it in the last Olympian, but he gets it in Battle of the Labyrinth. Yeah, he gets it at the end of battle. Yeah, but we don't see it until later. I just think it would have been really funny if he had had it for a while, like since book two, just a sand dollar. And this is what it's used for. (laughs) Like, I just like the buildup. I'm just it's been hanging around for this reason. How much does it clear up the pollution? Not a lot. Not a but... lot. It's, I think what he what I remember specifically is like, wow, just a little spurt of fresh water. Mm-hmm. I bet it felt nice, you know, like getting sprayed down with cold water on a hot summer's day. But then now you're just wet and sweaty. Yeah, it doesn't like he breaks it in half and there's a little like ripple of fresh water. Yeah. As if all the pollution in the bay were being dissolved. And then he gives one half to each of the rivers, but it doesn't. We don't revisit to see if there's any like actual impact on the rivers, but there must be. How do we? I guess I, I already said it. I feel like a broken clock. But how do we feel <laughs> about that as readers? Uh, like that there's it, no follow up. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of follow up in the uh, Iliad or um, Odyssey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can there be? <laughs> I would say the Odyssey is actually all fill- all uh, follow up of the Iliad, but just you're right. But guy. there's no there's no follow up of uh, the Odyssey. Oh, and, and of the um, and of uh, Agamemnon, there's a lot of follow. There was supposed to be. <laughs> we lost it. It's it's gone to the wind now. Bye. Somewhere bye. It was written. Someone had someone was told at the very least. Yeah. I do like the that that's what the sand dollar is for, like this symbolic, like the the cleaning. It, it ties into that like environmental message that was like really strong in the Percy Jackson books, and mm-hmm. that Percy trades like the. Ew, well, how do I want to word it? He's able to get these gods to help him by offering them like literally a better future for themselves. By, like, you can clean your waters, you can feel better, be healthier, like, this important environmental impact. And it sort of foreshadows, per- or just, like, underlines who Percy is. Like, later on, he was willing to, like, give up godhood to, like, no, he didn't even want that. Not really give it up. They just, the gods just assumed that's what he would ask for. He's like, no, pay your fucking child support. Like, that's <laughs> what I want. There was follow-up on that, though. There was. So. Now, the follow-up yeah. was, they did not bad. enough. But they drop, they, they just, the gods yeah. suck. Overthrow Zeus win, Rick. Overthrow Zeus win. But. He's building up to something. I doubt that's what it is, but he's building something. <laughs> I can't believe we're still hanging out yeah, with this guy. that's for sure. Speaking of building up to something, boilers for Chalice of the Gods. I don't want anybody yeah. to at me that we didn't give them enough warning. Yeah. This is your second warning, and we are going to talk in. Because we meet another river god. 
We do. Beans, as I recall, you said this was your favorite river god when we were yes. visiting. So would you like to take point on telling us about this boy? So I got to say the only thing I like about him is his vibe. He keeps yeah. a clean river and he has a man bun. I mean, what more could you want? Mm-hmm. So, no, it is, it is, is exactly how I he runs a tight ship he does <laughs> i love he is uh okay so uh vain... he tries to be calm on the surface but he's very angry he's very tense this man is so tense oh yes vague uh the our trio needs to go to this river to do a complete uh uh um a, mm, side quest on the path to the main quest yeah won't say more of that on the those details, but in regards to the river, is the Alessian? It's the River Ellison. The River Ellison. Thank you. It's said to be the cleanest river in the world, yes. and the, so clean it can clean anything. Anything monsters bathe in it. The Furies. The, yeah, Furies. Yeah, the yeah, Furies, Furies bathe in it, and uh, horned serpents. Yeah. So they roll up and are like, okay, well, we'll just do our quest here, and uh, Ellison is. Not jazz. <laughs> He's like, whoa, whoa, hey, whoa! I got a system, okay? You just jumped snakes in with on your shoes Tuesdays. On? <laughs> <laughs> you guys jumping with your shoes on. First of all, snakes on Tuesday, Monday, or Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, something else on Mondays and Wednesdays. Yeah, something um, on Fridays. I straight like, don't remember. It Demigods was definitely some never. kind of monster. <laughs> yeah, the sass in it too. The way I was reading that, so I was just old. like, "Wow, this man has oh, yeah. never let a demi god near his river. No, no ever. He's so. Mad. And who is Percy Jackson to try? Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Percy <laughs> Jackson. That's who it is to yeah. try. Okay, I, I found it. I found it. Uh, he is. Yeah, he's got a man bun with a. And it also describes as orbiting his hair was a tiny galaxy of weightless water droplets centered on the black hole of his man bun. <laughs> what a look. Other than he just looks like a guy. Like, I love the, uh, he's the just a water crunchy yoga dude. details of just the floating water around the hair. Like, oh, a granola guy. Yeah. A granola, just a crunchy <laughs> granola guy. So, yeah. Really, yeah. I ask for so little. Use the sign up sheets. Horn serpents are Tuesday, Thursdays. Furies and other underworld minions are Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Demigods are never. Take off your shoes before entering my waters. And above all, use only the lower pools. My headwaters are <laughs> off limits. You've managed to break all the rules. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be yeah. Percy if he didn't break every single possible every rule that there was. Every. Yeah. There is even a bronze plaque that says pool rules. <laughs> it's just... The most this is oh peak riordan just taking mythology and making it so mundane. mundane like all of a sudden you like are you can picture you're just standing at your like you are 12 years at old at your local community <laughs> pool mm-hmm. like and there's the pool signs Fuck. and the and the lifeguard is yelling at you because you broke every how was i supposed to know i was not allowed to have candy this close to the water i'm not in the I'm water 12. why are you yelling at i me? can't read i'm 12 i can't <laughs> He does make it like very accessible for younger kids. And I appreciate that as an mm-hmm. old lady in the fandom, yeah. because when I first read it, I was still able to understand everything. And I was like 13. Mm-hmm. So was that like 13 years ago, 14 years ago? I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah, many. Yeah. yeah. I love it. I think, yeah. The fact that there's just a pool rules plaque is just like, ah. Oh. It's funny. I don't know. I'm into it. I I have no notes. He decides he's this Ellison is like, let's see how long it takes a son of Poseidon to drown. And this kind of freaked me out when I first heard that because of the son of Neptune Mm -hmm. when he was scared of drowning. And I was like, could this river be any different? And no, Rick Riordan just likes to give me a lot over, of anxiety. He got over that fear quickly. <laughs> he, yeah. he hung around. <laughs> the moment he got into water again and breathed, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, right, I, could, right. I could breathe. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Like, for a moment, it would have been interesting to touch on it. But I think that the nature of, like, this book in particular is very much more, like, where the vibes are in Last Olympian versus I think, where they are in Heroes I think Heroes the fear of drowning got immediately rewritten by the trauma of Tartarus. You know, you know what? Bet. That's Ooh. fair. We replaced it. Something went higher. It's, there's there's an entirely different dichotomy here. Yeah. yeah. And that could be another episode for me too, because I just feel like nothing can top Tartarus, including oh. Chalice. 
And that is the beef that I have with it. It's House just of like, Hades is you, so strong of a book. Like, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it's beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's no other way to put it. Mm-hmm. Let's just, do we want to spend a couple minutes talking about vibes of Charles? This is the first time we've discussed it on the podcast. DJ, you were not super excited about it. No, uh, means just... you posted a video of you stabbing the box it arrived in. <laughs> Yes. Space for um, both of you. Space for both of you. No. Well, okay. So I was very excited uh, that okay. it was kind of getting revamped a little bit for, like I said, younger kids and generations to enjoy. But I feel like it didn't need to be written. And then he <laughs> just recently announced that it was going to be a trilogy. Yes. So I don't know if you've noticed, but you you start reading and you realize this is all just one quest and one letter <laughs> for... <laughs> So I was like, I was like a few chapters in and I was like, wait a second. I was like, there's no way that this is all three letters. I was like, this is taking way too long. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't think it needed to to be written. And once you go to Tartarus, I just feel like you don't bounce back from that. The way he's writing Percy to bounce back from that. Mm -hmm. So like no traumas are discussed. It's Percy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, he definitely trauma blocked a lot. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't think you have to, just in general, like, there are, like, in real life, like, bad things happen to you. And life does keep happening. So at one point, you got to be like, well, well, I'm just, I guess I'm going to just keep going forward. And if I have to put all that stuff in a box and throw it in the river sticks, then I will. I feel like Percy definitely would be be the kind of, like, be the kind of person who would, um, when someone's like, hey, man, you want to talk about Tartar? So, like, it gets brought up somewhere and Percy's just like, hey, man. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> just shuts it down real quick. Yeah. And I think that's that's fair. If that's not helpful yeah. <laughs> in your recovery first, don't you don't have to engage in it. Uh and it's yeah. funny cuz uh yeah, cuz Rick like right like the day Chalice dropped all of a sudden it's like, "Ah, oh, uh Wrath of the Triple Goddess is the next one." And I yes. remember yeah, last year when they announced Chalice was coming out, like I was in the car with DJ, we were actually driving to the airport with our family to go to Orlando for that <laughs> Disney World trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like reading the funny how it works right right and I'm like reading the description of like what the book is going to be about and DJ and I are talking like it's okay so he's got to get three letters for that. that's okay this is gonna be the first one for only the first one so he's doing a trilogy he's got to be doing more than one book right yeah like, like obvious yeah and I was like, he's like, like oh like, twist and we're just like not a twist Rick we all saw it coming yeah he's getting it from quest giver <laughs> we only know one quest giver right now oh yeah yeah it's obviously a trilogy <laughs> All right, yeah, we'll my say. context clues could not figure that one out. Yeah, right. I had to be reading to figure that one. <laughs> fair, fair. But I was pleasantly surprised by this book. Like, I, I came in with, like, actually little to no expectations because I just haven't been excited for these books that he's been releasing. Like, they've been good, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. But, like, Sun and the Moon or Sun and Star, and I'm just like, you know, I'm like, a lot of people are excited about it. It's like, whatever for me. It was great. Mm-hmm. I liked listening to it. You you don't have emotional attachment to Nico and Will. You no, like not, them as characters, not, not but they're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're not like they're, <laughs> they're, not, your they're not super strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not like Jason, Aww, <laughs> Apollo, DJ. Percy. Yeah, but I actually I very much enjoyed this one. Actually, yeah, I had a very good time with it. Yeah, I hope like it starts to get really just down to the wire where he he's almost scared he's not going to go to New Rome, mm-hmm. like if he can't like by the third book really get that letter of recommendation i feel like rick is gonna keep us on our obviously he's gonna get to go right yeah like what two and a half weeks to do this quest it's gonna get to the point where he's got three days right and the deadline is coming up and you are not getting into new rome without this thing it's always the solstice the summer solstice (sighs) and uh i meanwhile have only read half of the book so far so (laughs) That will be talk the about end. what we're talking about today. So that will be the end of our Talos of the Gods discussion. Oh, except for uh, Percy does get so mad when this guy, when Ellison is trying to drown him that he explodes the river Dude. and does clean it up very well. <laughs> so <laughs> The whole way they were talking about it, too, it's just like <laughs> Percy busted and then like, oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry about that. That was a little premature. <laughs> and then just left. <laughs> The way they're describing oh, no. it and talking about it, I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> the way are like, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't read it as such, but now that you say it, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. I could see that. 
Okay, now we're forcibly moving away from this conversation. <laughs> So those are the three like, noteworthy. And about this regards. comforting Ellison, like, yeah, you know, it happens. Like, I'm sorry, man, but like, in person, sometimes he's feeling scary. bad when he <laughs> didn't do anything wrong. When he gets mad. <laughs> and then person's apologizing after this guy tried to drown him. Like, why am I apologizing? So those are our noteworthy river gods in the books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's swing into mythology territory. Anybody got any myth stuff they want to throw up first before I just go through the notes? None. It's cool. Not a thought. Uh, <laughs> I mean, how how are we structuring this episode? Are we just talking about any river god? Um, yes. Do you have a river god? I do. Yamoja from um oh, what's her uh, wait, no, no, Greek river gods. We're sticking to Greek <laughs> river gods. That's, why do you think I asked in such a vague manner as so the river confused. gods in general? <laughs> when do, okay, I guess we have, no, when have we ever? I don't know, I just figured that there wasn't a lot for river gods. <laughs> okay, well, specifically we are talking about the Potamoi, which is okay. Greek for rivers. So that's how we're structuring the episode. The Pottermore River. The Pottermore yeah. River. Uh, the no, Pottermore shut River. up. Stop. <laughs> the Potamus. Hesiod claimed, you know, in his Theogony, claimed there were 3,000 Potamoi and that they were the sons of Oceanus and Tevis, which also made them the brothers of the Oceanids, like uh, Amphitrite and Thetis. <laughs> Each god was a river on Earth. And that they were all the fathers of all the freshwater naiads. Like, that's where the naiads come from. Mm. Nereid is ocean. Naiad is freshwater. Yeah? Mm, okay. I think okay. so. Sure. I thought it was naiad. Or maybe but... I'm wrong. Don't worry about it. It's important to note that 3,000 isn't supposed to be taken as, like, this is the exact factual number of all the rivers. Because named Potomoy, we actually only have 125 like that we can find in record 3000 is more just a it's meant to signify that there are so many of them they are innumerable it would like we would say there's an awful lot of rivers on this earth yes more than 3000 but 3000 sounded like an awful lot when you're hanging out in ancient greece the world seems so small back then Mm -hmm. quote from theogony translated by hugh g evelyn white there are 3,000 Oceanids, and as many again are the rest of the Potomoi, murmurously running, sons of Oceanus and Lady, Thief- Lady Tethius was their mother, and it would be hard for a mortal man to tell all the names of them, but each is known by those who live by him. And I just like that. Just the, the, the like, you can't name them all, but, but you know. You know yours. He, he's the river you live by. And... I found something very like intimate and comforting about that notion that no, like mortals weren't expected to know all of them. You, but you could rely the on the one river. closest to you. <laughs> What'd you say to you? The river Boise. Oh, the river. <laughs> yes. We have the river uh, snake. Stop doing that. I think I don't know why that's upsetting me so much for you to do. <laughs> Cause it's, it's our river names, just <laughs> named like uh, yeah, the river sticks, the river Lethe, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I never really call it, we don't call the sticks river, nope. or the river Ellison. Yeah, I hadn't heard uh-uh. the river Boise, the river snake, <laughs> the river Hudson, the river East River, the river East. Well, because it, it's called the East River, because that's how Percy says East Hudson river, river? and East River. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you can't just say east, right? I, but I would, it implies that it is the river, East River. <laughs> In art, the Potomoy. Oh, you know what? There's one more uh, river god we forgot to mention. And he is appears in Mark of Athena when they're going across. He is the bullheaded one that Hercules has beef with. Mm, Pun right, not him. The one, the one whose horn became the cornucopia twice. Yes. He's that's, also that's a Piper's river, river god. god. Mm-hmm. Yes. Piper made that river got his bitch. <laughs> she felt so. Oh, she felt so bad about that. For real. Who for cares? Real? The guy was an asshole. <laughs> like he was. I'm yeah. not saying he's not. But they got they Most got like the infinite, infinite good food. Yes. They got the cornucopia. Yes. Three hundred people. Cornucopia. That was awesome. I saw. I have the um graphic novel too, and 
I actually have it right here. Oh. Have you seen the the drawings, the art in the Mark of Athena graphic? The no. cornucopia is huge. <gasps> well, I, I mean, guess it, it makes it's sense. It's so funny. I wish I could find it, but I didn't bookmark it. So I will pull it up later. Oh my gosh, thank you. No, I haven't stuck with the the heroes graphic, graphic novels. novels. Are they are they worthwhile? I like it because, you know, little fan artist me and it's super easy mm-hmm. to read, but it's basically just like a Percy Jackson comic and mm-hmm. you can see it here. It's literally for the people listening. It's probably two, cool. two and a half feet long. It's as big as Piper's head. I was well, not picturing something large that big. Throw out a, a whole cooked ham. <laughs> but she I, carries yeah. it around everywhere. I don't think it like Sling I think Rick Ryan was thinking like a table cornucopia, and then later on they're like it has to be bigger. And he's like, oh shoot, you're right, it has to be bigger. I don't know. It it doesn't have to be that big. It could still be a table cornucopia. Yeah, like they could have big old mouth. scaled it a little bit down. Yeah. They could have made some kind of riptide version of the cornucopia that just That's compacts true. It down. Have just shrunk <laughs> into her hand. Yeah, she didn't have to carry around the giant bullhorn. Turns into I... like a megaphone. <laughs> be so good so there are three different way that the uh, river gods the potomoy would be depicted in ancient art so the first way was as a man-headed bull and i am dropping links to a couple old tiny vases with this art in it that you can you can observe (laughs) wow (laughs) he looks so stupid Mm -hmm. so weird it's so weird. Another way you would see. But hey, was that's a, that's the bull. That's the bull god. That's, yeah, that's him. That's yeah. him. Yeah, it's the that one that he says a lot. <laughs> you would also see a bullheaded man with the body of a serpentine fish. <laughs> that just looks like a horned man with the body fish. Oh wow! This is from a mosaic. Lastly, they would be depicted as just a guy. Euphrates. Yeah. Euphrates nuts. <laughs> no, Tavis, what? You are Miss Bay. You are out of control in this episode. I'm My brother. Shit, dude. <laughs> I know. All right. So these are the ways that they're portrayed. So Hudson, classic. Ellison, classic. Our bullheaded man, DJ, as you pointed out, that guy. I don't know where Riordan got our looks like a seal dude. What that one I couldn't about? find. Got yeah. it from your third example. <laughs> the third example? Is the that serpent? what it's supposed to... yeah, Or the sec- well, yeah, second example. The serpent. Oh, maybe maybe that's what he was going for. Wolf maybe face. Percy's just blind. Yeah, maybe you know just, what? It maybe. was the pollution of the water distorting everything <laughs> you know? that he could see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I accept that as a headcanon. The bull description should be noted that it it was like... This is supposed to be totally symbolic. Like, if you like, if you saw a picture of some like powerful CEO and the the image had like them holding the world in their hands, we would understand that as this guy is not literally so large they could hold a planet in their hands. It is that they are so powerful. That is what the bull like imagery is supposed to communicate. That they were the river is as powerful as the bull, and also like the strength of the rivers and the sound of a roaring river. Like, that's where the bull iconography is being incorporated into the river motif. Nice. Don't fuck around with water. Don't fuck around with water. We're going to extend this to canals. Don't swim in a canal. (laughs) Don't swim in a canal. Don't swim in a canal. I I side by that 100%. Don't. (laughs) Do not. Chad always said, hey, don't swim in a canal. This is not the first time we've told listeners not to swim in canals. (laughs) Don't swim in canals. (laughs) You can get stuck at the bottom and the mud will keep you there. <laughs> you, I had to wade into a canal to save my girlfriend's dog's frisbee while I was watching her because it was day one and the dog <laughs> likes to swim in the canal and dropped her frisbee, this expensive Kong frisbee, and I had to wade in there to get it. And I was so upset. <laughs> I didn't want to get in the canal, but I did. Oh, my goodness. I was goodness. watching my girlfriend's dog and I couldn't lose the frisbee on day one. Uh, so, uh, though the Potomoy were children of titans poseidon was said to be king of the potomoy which classic that that tracks yeah they were also viewed as being protectors of the young in another passage from the theogony she 
she being uh, Tethys, brought forth a race apart from the daughters, who with Lord Apollo and the Potomoy, who with Lord Apollo and the Potomoy have the young and they're keeping all over the earth since this right from Zeus is given them. Not, I don't what? know what that means. Okay. Now that, yeah. that also goes to how you wanted Trials of Apollo to end, where Apollo just starts enacting on him being the god of the young. <gasps> yes, that's exactly what I wanted to have happen in Trials of Apollo. And look, there's it's there in the text. <laughs> it's there. In the text. Gotta yes. go through me if you want to get anybody un- under 18, okay, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Or just uh, like under thirteen, because that's when Greeks viewed adult. <laughs> let's not. Let's not. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> There's another passage, I think, from the Iliad that I didn't save this quote. Uh, we'll talk about the Iliad more specifically in a hot second. But someone, I think it's Patroclus's father, says like promises to like cut off a lock of his hair and give it to the river if his son is to return home safely or something of that. I'm probably not right on that. But there is someone being like, if X comes home safely, I will give my hair to the river. And that's supposed to be part of this tradition of rivers, gods being viewed as protecting the young. Mm, Okay. Which is interesting. Last like wild. So this is really what I'm just calling like the, the, mm, roundup of just general river god details to like set the groundwork so like we understand where these like the ancient peoples would have been coming from some myths said that these rivers were actually the first kings of their given lands for example Iacus was the first king of argos and nihilus was an egyptian river god whose daughters married the descendants of Iacus and then formed dynasties in egypt libya arabia and ethiopia nice so very important like literally life comes from the river type rivers were concept. super important in civilization so important goofily important if you know, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh yeah it's super goofy when you need water to live <laughs> goofily important <laughs> late antiquity would later re- retcon these stories to instead be about mortal kings who just named the rivers after themselves <laughs> Which I think is less fun, but I would right. absolutely name a river after myself. <laughs> no, I would too. I'm not saying the naming the river off. after yourself is less fun. I'm saying being like, well, they were gods who were rivers. No, 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 no. That was just a guy. What are you talking about? Like they were like <laughs> kings or descendants of gods. Don't you know, Darian? <laughs> Congruent with like every civilization. <laughs> I, which stands to the point, it should just they should just be rivers, <laughs> not just a guy. All right, I've got some roundups. Uh, since we already mentioned him, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, bullheaded, well, gentleman. His name is Achelous, mm-hmm. who is god of the Achelous River, which was actually the largest river in Greece. Nice. He lost a wrestling match to Hercules. Of course he did. Because they. Both- I mean, who who won against Hercules? Did anyone? In Greek uh, mythology? Old age got it as a draw. No, technically, oh. <laughs> Hercules' wife won. <laughs> Hercules' wife, but it was a draw between Hercules and the god of old age. <laughs> no, uh, so this was a wrestling match for the hand of Dianaria, who, as a side note, Apollodorus described as a woman who drove a chariot and practiced the art of war. Which has nothing to do with river oh, gods yeah. or what this is about, but I just thought that hmm. was cool. But yeah, so they both wanted to marry her. Hercules won, so he got to marry her. She got conned by a centaur later on and told that if she put the centaur blood inside Hercules' clothes, he would remain faithful for her. That's not what centaur blood does. No. So, uh, Can that's... you clarify what it does? Very um, acidic. K- kills oh. you in a horrible way. <laughs> That is who beat Hercules. Is Dianaria by accident. Oh, no. Which makes what the Stoll brothers do to Phoebe, like, real messed up. Because it's like, in the book, it's about like, oh, she, like, they gave her a t-shirt lined with centaur blood. And it almost sounds like, oh, she's experiencing, like, the way it's played off, it's like serious, but it's like poison ivy serious. Like, oh, a bat, I can't prank. And it's like, that's not what centaur blood does, Rick. What the hell? <laughs> Maybe it was a different kind of blood. Maybe, you know, yeah, where did they get it? It was probably really watered It was down. good guy centaur blood. 
It was Chiron. Yeah, if it was Chiron. Yeah. Chirons and the party ponies, you know, their centaur blood is the good guy centaur. Blood. It's, it's super chill. It just it just causes a really funny rash, like yeah. a really funny rash. Like it's it's blue, that kind of funny mm-hmm. rash. Like it shouldn't it's be shaped blue, weird. but it's blue. Like it looks like cat whiskers. Like yeah, it's itchy, yeah. but you're fine. A yeah, little, you'll you'll get over it in like a day or two. Like it'll yeah, an oatmeal bath it. and you'll be fine. A little Epsom salt, it clears it's right Epsom up. Epsom salt. Mm-hmm. I want to tell a quick story about some three other river gods, Asterion, Sophisus, and Iancus. Yeah, no, I said it right earlier. <laughs> and so they had once settled a land dispute between Poseidon and Hera. Okay. So this ancient geographer named Pausanias, who wrote a text called The Description of Greece, and he claimed that the Patamoi determined that the land belonged to Hera, Poseidon was really bitter about this decision. So he made the waters in the rivers disappear for a time. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> yeah. Gone. You lose Petty. you know what? You lose yeah. water privileges, bud. <laughs> yeah, basically. So this is an example of an analogical myth explaining why these rivers ran dry during the summer months. Mm, nice. And I love that the geographer was like so here's some rivers in this map and this description. And also, it's because they made the gods mad. High tide, low tide, what's that? <laughs> wow. No. <laughs> We've got another river, Evanus. And according to Apollodorus, this river god was actually not a child of Oceanus, but a son of Ares and was originally a mortal king of uh, Atolia. And his daughter, Marpessa, was abducted. And so Evidus chose to rescue her. And when he fails, he throws himself into the nearby river Lycrimus. After this happened to this king, the gods took pity on him and rescued his daughter from the kidnapper, JK. They actually made him immortal. And he became god of the river, which was later renamed after him. Nice. Marpessa? Don't know. <laughs> Don't know what happened to her. Just... Sad. Didn't follow up on that thread. Probably not good. And so I got one more. And it's the big one. Sticks? No, because goddess. Not river god, mm. not a pot of moy. Well, technically, yes, she because is her a father was Oceanmo. Yeah. Yes, true. We talked so about sticks. So is the river already. Lethe, but she's not born of Oceanus. Yes. So not her. She's born of Eris. Ooh, I do love yeah. that. No. This is, this is from the Iliad, a.k.a. that one time Achilles fought a river. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's also <laughs> in this article. Hold on. A is it whole dying? ass river. Literally, the Iliad, book 21, is called the river. He's fighting Scamander. That's, yes. So that Scam- sounds like a fucking um, futuristic JRPG protagonist. Scamander? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Are you going to find something? Oh, it's Newt Scamander. From you're fucking... th- I was about to say, did you know Newt Scamander? That's what you're thinking of. Yeah. Yep. I'm like, what's the name? I recognize the name, and it's it's Harry Potter. Yeah, Rick, why I don't know that? It's Newt Scamander. Yeah, that's where I could have told you. I was like, oh, you're looking it up? Yeah, I'll tell you why it's familiar. Achilles is on a killing spree. Like, he's, he's just killing a bunch of dudes. Fuck it up, Achilles. <laughs> This is after Patroclus has they been killed. They killed your close so buddy. What... <laughs> yeah, oh my god, it was his roommate. And they were uh, roommates. <laughs> they were roommates. And they were roommates. So, then the swirling river, in a fury, spoke to him, taking on human form from his and from his eddying depths called out, Achilles, you are more powerful than other men, more capable of doing dreadful harm. The gods are constantly protecting you, but even if great Zeus, son of Kronos, enables you to slaughter all the children... All the Trojans, at least drive them away from me. Perform your horrifying actions on the plain. My lovely streams have been clogged up with corpses. I cannot freely pour my waters down into the shining sea because the bodies choke me. Yet you keep on killing more, annihilating everyone. Come on, leader of the troops. Stop now. This is too much. Get the ass. Get him, (laughs) Achilles. Swift-footed Lord Achilles answered him, It'll be as you say, Divine Scamander, but I will massacre these arrogant Trojans, not stopping till I trap them in their city, and fight with Hector, man to man, and see if he defeats me or I conquer him. And so Achilles does keep fighting, but he does not do the thing that he was asked to do, which is 
keep out of the river? <laughs> and so he it's literally... it's the golden plaque sign again. It's... Yes, literally pool rules, <laughs> no dead Trojans. This is where this is the <laughs> this is the event that created that sign. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No. This is yeah. this is where Rick got it from for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he does jump in the river. And the river with surges. With his shoes on, mind you. With his <laughs> shoes on. Bloody sandals. The river surged and swelled and rushed against him, swirling and gathering his streams together to sweep away the multitude of corpses. Uh, that Okay, no, I'm just going to stop. Dude, that's a fucking it. sweet visual. Yeah. A tidal wave that's just like red with corpses coming in and out of it. Ooh, yeah, That's a yeah. sick-ass visual. It is. <laughs> uh, next, it says, Roaring like a bull, the river hurled them out onto the land. He saved the people who were still alive, hiding them under his lovely streams among the whirling eddies of his depths. Uh, roaring like a bull. There's that bull thing I mentioned earlier. <sighs> the rest of this, these rest of the pages of this this book is... Achilles fighting this river. I'm not going to keep reading from this patches. Uh, translation by Emily Wilson. By the way, gang, just uh, in case that wasn't obvious that that'll be the translation I'll be using from now on because mm-hmm. it finally came out and I'm so happy to have it. Uh, she's so good at translating things. So that's that's it. He just, the river, this river basically just about kills him if the Achilles has to call for the gods to intervene. Yeah, like, right. Scamander is not happy. <laughs> and that's incredible. Hey, y'all, the Iliad is awesome. It's so The Iliad's weird. a great read when not Good. done in ancient English. Yes, if it's actually like, yeah. If it's I've, I've gone on my things about the right. importance of a good translation and not trying yeah. to make your translation sound archaic, but... They just really skipped over the part when they talk about the Iliad where, and then Achilles fights a river. Hell the yeah. river asked him nicely, please don't pollute. And Achilles said, sure, man, and then continued to pollute. So the river punched him in the face. Achilles was sitting there with like a black eye and a broken nose. Like, you should see the other guy. (laughs) The other guy's totally fine. (laughs) Other totally fine. Yeah. Uh, I think as it ends, I think there is a point where Achilles does kind of start to one up the river. And everyone's like, hey, he's not supposed to be able to kill the river. Oh, no. Hey, wait, wait. Hold on a second. (laughs) Yeah, reel it back in. Someone else gets involved and yeah. There are other like stories of of river gods. Those are the ones that I thought were fun enough to want to talk about on the podcast today. <laughs> so that would be most enjoyable for our experience. And really, that's all I got. <laughs> nice. I appreciate all the mythology behind it because honestly, I am not super well versed in like the Iliad and the Odyssey. I read it in high school, which was oh. um, a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And what we read was ancient, archaic texts. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. understand it. Rick Riordan didn't, didn't write it, so exactly. You know what? Yeah, right. Rick really should translate the Odyssey. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. That's his next thing for Disney. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised. Talking about no, <laughs> that's just the fucking last Olympian. That, I think it's like when we like teach kids Shakespeare, but like force them to read the plays instead <laughs> of letting them watch a live yeah. performance of professional actors doing Shakespeare. Like it's so different. It's, it's, it's entirely different. It's so, and not say like you can get a vibe by reading a script from a play, but especially when it's a vernacular that we don't speak. If you're not seeing someone who understands Wasn't it, give the emotion behind it, it. You just, in the time that it was written. Huh? Yeah. They didn't speak the vernacular that Shakespeare wrote in the time that it was written. Well, I think they, but it was like, it was like a higher <laughs> was, level, but it was like it they might got have been they closer, but it. it was still like more pompous. He made shit up like bedroom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, <laughs> like, being, non- he was being Shakespeare, but it wasn't like, <laughs> yeah. It's like the Iliad, like what I just read. No one talks like that, but you got what I meant. Yeah. So that's my thought. Uh, stop teaching making kids read these scripts give schools more money to hire professional Shakespearean actors to come perform for them that's how we should teach Shakespeare if I would have had that in school I don't think I would have appreciated it back then either so you know what that's fair I appreciated I Shakespeare I a Idaho Festival whenever they came to whenever they yeah. came to my school but you know other kids are like why are we doing this awesome. I, I read 
Julius Caesar when I was in high school, and I'm like, I don't know. And then I saw it a couple years ago at the Idaho Shakespeare Festival, and I was like, oh my god, oh, it's about ass. a bunch of petty bitches who hate their boss. I love this. <laughs> Look at them go. They ruined their own lives. Go, bestie. <laughs> go, bestie. <laughs> go, Brute. You got it. You're making bad decisions. I love you, babe. No, but okay. Uh, so, so now I'd be like, okay, actually, before we do that, hey, why are these guys all called gods, but like nymphs and naiads or stuff are just nature spirits? Slow head shake from beans. They just. Huh. I have no idea. They're river goddesses. We know. They're, it's the sticks and leaves. Yeah. Two. And they're scary. The under- we don't talk yes. about them. <laughs> two. Do they have uh, any kind of personification? We see sticks in so, Trials yeah. of Apollo. Oh, yeah. That's she's my awesome, um, weak sure. But just once. No, just like one yeah. time, though. It's like 15 books. Well, she's that awesome. The she's fact that she didn't show fuck. up when Percy jumped in the river, like that's a missed opportunity. It might be. Yeah. But it's like she's sitting there like, there's precedent. <laughs> yeah. No, but I think it would have been more just like it's her like to talk to Percy, like him under the water and it's burning and she's there looking at him just judging like, you you don't have the stuff and then it's like you see her expression change and all of a sudden it's the memory of annabeth and that's where she's like oh you do have it you're gonna be okay kid i don't know i like the river six it, it a lot. could have yeah like, for sure and uh maybe that's because i just really like the way sticks is portrayed in girl goddess queen hey i caught it up again <laughs> i got it one more time <laughs> but yeah i the, the actual reason i think is sexism that's why these river gods are gods and then they're not just considered a like nature spirit, a river spirit. They are gods. Maybe there's just more like Nerids and Nyads. There's like just too many. And that's True. why there's, there's spirit. But it's like it's like Thetis, so she's a she's an oceanid, but she's so often just called like a Nyad, a Nereid, a nymph. Mm. Whereas her brothers are the Potomoy and they are all called gods now. Whereas in historically translations, Thetis was referred to, she was viewed as a goddess. But what I mean mostly is like translation and reinterpretation has like really downplayed the feminine nature spirits. Whereas like dude ones still get to be considered gods. And there is a clear distinction between right. when I say nature spirit and the nature god. And I'm just going to call it out whenever I see it, because men. So that's my last thought I have. I could not find river gods in pop culture to do for this segment. There's not a lot used, especially from the Greek uh, mythology. Yeah. Like, I think the closest thing I might be able to pull is arguably Charon in Spine. <laughs> like, yeah, but he's... Arguably. Do they really incorporate him be with like river elements? Yeah, or... yeah, in Smite. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, he's on oh, a he's boat. Oh, he's a pirate. <laughs> he's well, a yeah, pirate on a, on a boat. <laughs> and he <laughs> summons like the river water. sticks. Yeah. Okay, that's a little river gaudy. Because Karen doesn't summon the river sticks. He just goes across it. Yeah, but he summons it here. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, I'll give you that one. For the theatrics yeah. of it. For the, Yes. Yeah. So only because Sticks lets him. Yeah, of um, course. They're on good terms. They have brunch on Sundays. They do have brunch on Sundays. <laughs> and they talk shit about other thonic gods. Charon sits there and just looks at Styx while Styx is just venting. <laughs> she's got to say, hey, she's got to get it out. <laughs> she's got to get it out. And, and Charon's just sitting the there listening. And she'll tell the hot gossip about what people are like, what their late, recent oaths have been. She's got all yeah. the tea. Don't drink it, though. <laughs> Charon might uh, be able to, too. Yeah, I bet he's fine. So in my notes, I literally wrote, because I just, I'd never not had a thing. I wrote, once I created a river goddess for the Boise River for a Monster of the Week campaign I ran. <laughs> she was awesome. I just needed a river goddess for, to, honestly, because they needed to put a different goddess somewhere else. So I was like, we could put her in the river. And it's like, oh, because she was Lethe. Sorry, I'm remembering you this camp. This Boise isn't fun River for anybody. Lethe? No, the goddess that needed a new home was Lethe. Oh, okay. So they went to the Boise River, and the god there was a goddess already living there, but she's like, yeah, she can hang with me. And then they were roommates. <laughs> oh, my. The other one that's in Smite is Yemoja, actually. 
Okay. And she's from the Yoruba. Hmm. And she is mother of all Orishas, which I don't know enough about the Yoruba pantheon. Yeah, we should avoid that. We talk should about. Just script. Uh, like, that's cool. But she Sounds is cool. <laughs> often, like, she is a. She can cure infertility in women. Hmm. She cleanses and comforts children of their sorrow. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. She's motherly and protective. And so she's like a big healer in Smite. I like that. Yeah. What is what Smite? Is it like a... Oh. It's a, it's a <laughs> game that I... Yeah, it's a game that I play where you pick gods from different pantheons mm-hmm. um, and just oh. fight each other. Yeah. It's a battle royale. With MOBA. The... MOBA, thank you. Yes. Multi- <laughs> thank multiplayer you for... online battle arena. Honestly, thank you so much because we've just gotten so accustomed to like and what's going on Talking smite that we kind of just we don't explain <laughs> what it is. And there are very likely listeners who started recently with recent episodes that are like, I don't know what it is. And at this point I'm too afraid to ask. So oh my God, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a gamer. <laughs> There's Google so, for you, fellas. <laughs> yeah. If you search you smite, it'll come fine. right up. I hope so. And not just like the definition of it. Yeah, right. Just search I have to Google like then. why did my podcast talk about Smite? Yeah. Yes. Smite was... game. <laughs> or Smite and then insert God and chances are you'll find it. There, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Bree, can you think of any examples of like river gods or personifications from books, movies, TV shows? Obviously not games. N- no, not in pop culture. Yeah. I don't even have great knowledge of rivers because <laughs> I have, you know, just a couple rivers around me here in mm-hmm. South Florida and never once have I been like, yeah, you know what? This God would go good in this river. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah. It's just polluted and like, Aww. I it wouldn't, it wouldn't work out well. So I identify actually probably with like the Hudson River. Yeah. It's being, yeah. It's just cranky. Murky. Mm-hmm. I think for that note, since we don't have any uh, pop culture, would anybody like to share their favorite river activity? I'd done it like once, but tubing down the river is a lot of fun. Floating down the boys' yep. river is a class. You know, summer has started proper when they open up the river for floating. It's yeah, a big part of the the culture around here. So I guess my activity would be not necessarily going into the river near me, but Mm -hmm. there is a coffee bar downtown that's on the river. Mm -hmm. And I go every Friday night and Ah! sit down there and drink coffee and watch the sunset. And I'm on the East coast of Florida. So there's not a lot of places that you can sit and watch the sunset on the water, but Uh this Marina is on like the intercoastal. So it's really cool. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, um, you probably don't want to be getting into murky water in the state of Florida. No. No, and a lot of That's people got brain do. brain eating amoeba. Also yes. crocodile. <laughs> um I think crocodile. south of where I am there okay. might be some crocodile. Yeah. I could probably Not exactly survive a right. crocodile, but I doubt I could survive the brain eating amoeba. <laughs> yeah, alligators. Alligators are Allig- big. Oh, I forget. forget R- yeah, through through our rivers. The the whole idea of a river personally, I don't like the bottom of a river i don't like the squishy the like squishy. slimy feeling under my yeah, feet it's not Can't like do sand it. in the ocean it's different no yeah sand in the ocean is is 100 percent better than whatever is at the bottom of a river yeah, around river here it's different and not in a good way <laughs> yeah i remember yeah. uh a smite does have another river god because i was oh. remembering one i couldn't remember his name hibwa god of the R- yellow river from chinese mythology Oh, very cool. Yeah. Wow. He's a very powerful mage. He has a skin for the Amazon, which is kind of sick. I like that. Yeah. I think uh, my favorite river activity is probably, I love paddle paddleboarding and paddling on the river is really fun, but I really love, my girlfriend has a black lab, big old water seal dog, and I love going on walks with them by the green belt. And then Melba the dog just gets to dive right in the river and just swim around and <laughs> chase sticks and be just the happiest you've ever seen any living being. Just so happy in the water. And then inevitably, if, the, if it's nice, my girlfriend will join her dog and be equally <laughs> happy. So that's my favorite river activity. Nice. And I'm over here not dressed for that being like, love you, babe. I don't want to get in the water. 
I'm wearing tights. <laughs> Look cute, though. Can I take a picture? So with that, I feel like we've reached the episode's end. Yeah. I don't mouth think we're going to dump anymore. I think. Is that the end of the river? How does the river end? We're going yeah, into the, the delta. The river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It usually goes into like a lake or just kind of. The mouth is what makes it go into yeah. a lake or ocean. Oh. Stellar. Yeah. Okay, we've reached the mouth of the river, which means, hey, Bree, is there anything you want to plug? You can follow me on Instagram, Disney Beans, all one word. I also have a small fandom shop where I hand make all of my merch. I have stickers, artwork, t-shirts, and the shop is disbeans.com. You can also follow the shop Instagram. It's just at disbeans. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot on social media, and that's kind of my thing. What started as fan art has now turned into this whole merch empire for That's mostly so cool. Percy Jackson. So no. and it's it's quality stuff. Like I said, I have the the shirt and it has held up so well. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. No, it's so good. Uh, granted, I never put it in the dryer. So I think that's important too. It's like, you are one of the important. you follow the instruction. <laughs> don't dry it. Yeah. I have a Camp Applet shirt that's not just from not from beans. Symbol, no, I no, bought no. it before I encountered your stuff yeah. and DJ's is the faded, symbol is faded. just it's bad. It's just yeah. not in there anymore. It looks like yeah. DJ fought in the Battle of Manhattan. That's what that yeah. shirt looks like. It looks he like tried I to talk to the, the rivers and was not a son of Poseidon. And then the only the symbol got fucked up. It's so of weird. course, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, so I use like heat transfer vinyl, and so the dryer would not. It doesn't do well in the dryer. It gets wrinkled. So I'm glad mm -hmm. you don't dry it. Yeah. No, it also wouldn't fit me anymore. I'm a very specific body shape. And if I put any of my shirts in the dryer, they don't fit anymore. So twofold. But I would also yep. say that like, you're essentially the unofficial, official Camp Half-Blood t-shirt for the Rhineverse podcasters. Like, mm, I don't know if you yeah. were this, but I think you wisely reached out to Lachlan and hooked her up with a code she dropped that code in our Discord, and that's how I was like, I need that. And that's how Robert's like, I need that. So there's like, other folks have different shirts that they bought prior. And that's like, fine. I, if you listeners, if you remember the picture from March when we were at the Empire State Building, a lot of different shirts, multiple Disbean shirts, though. But I will admit there a is a, there is a mild side eye that happens if someone like buys a new one and it's not a Disbean shirt. I am a little bit like, no, but what are really? you doing? <laughs> That, maybe it's just me, but I'm like, mm. you, but I, oh, I love it. Interesting. I'm gonna mm. Like it's just a little bit like, mm, but you know, we have when I get a new one. We have someone that we. Yeah, please do. You are aware. I won't make you one. No, <laughs> <laughs> no I, I will. I'll, that'll probably be DJ's birthday present. I'll get him the new shirt for his birthday. Yeah, his yeah. Birthday. I kind of had like indirectly become friends with Robert on Instagram, and so mm -hmm. I was like, "Hey, you're the one person that talks to all of the podcasters." And I was like, That's "I can't right, was reach Robert. them all." Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, so that was I was so like, smart. "It worked." I was like, "Give them this discount code because I was like, dude, if there's a Percy Jackson podcaster and they don't have a T-shirt, they must have one." I didn't have like, one yet. It's, yeah, it's it's been rule. so long. No, and yeah. honestly, the discount, I was like, I've been wanting one. I was like, oh, I don't need one. I should have one. I bought one for DJ. I'll wait. And I was like, oh, discount code. But no, that's great. great. And then I just flat out like, ooh, metal beads. I'll pay full price for these because I know they are quality. <laughs> yeah, and you got in good because I realized once I had, I think I had to make close to 30 necklaces, which is, you know, way bigger than anything I had ever done before. That's that so it was a lot more work than I had anticipated. It so was worth you Y yeah well so i'm gonna increase the price a little bit here good for you inflation I'm yes a I'm glad. couple good. sand dollars worth if you will <laughs> no good way way to be an artist and a creator who knows what you're worth i this means nothing i'm proud of you good job thank you no, i appreciate that mm -hmm. seriously so undervalue yeah and i i'm starting to learn that more and especially mm -hmm. with like artwork i'm working on my first commission right now <gasps> and Holy hell, I <laughs> totally underestimated what mm. the girl wanted. So I just, my artwork is full background, full characters, whatever. And I kind of yeah. just did a fixed price. Dude, I'm like five hours into it right now and haven't there's even got a, to the characters. Oh, <laughs> there's no. a reason a lot of artists <laughs> actually do like character, line art, $5. She knows that yeah. now. <laughs> she got out. 
Ten dollars. So it's just I don't draw $30. like that. Like mm-hmm. I just I do full pieces you of artwork. Like yeah. You, I yeah I don't even. So I, the thing I have, is, just charge more in general. You only do this so style like and, yes. you get something like this, and it won't. Uh, well, for the people that are going to listen, it's just showing my artwork. You get something mm-hmm. like that, and it's it doesn't break down well. <laughs> yeah, price wise. So so you just have no, to increase. Fair. Is I yeah. know. So the, I got in the first round of the necklaces. You open pre orders again for the next round, right? Who I will was, in a few days, probably the, over the weekend. By the time okay. this airs. Pre-orders will probably be open, and then mm-hmm. they'll close after about a week. So, okay. So, do you think they'll still be open uh, October thirty-first? I'll make sure to have them open. Okay, because I was going to thirty-first. Perfect. So, if you are listening the day this airs or days around it, also within the week, there Happy is a Halloween, link to the show. By the way. Happy Halloween, by the way. There Woo. is a link in the show notes to, of course, all of Bean stuff. But I'm specifically going to drop a link to that necklace because. I have it. It's stunning. I have it. I don't even have it in like a pile with all my other necklaces. It's hanging on my cork board with my pins. Like I have it up there so I can see really? it. Really? It's, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, I had designed um, the the engravings on them and mm-hmm. I kind of went with something that was like a little bit different for each one. Yeah. But I order the, the beads custom and mm-hmm. like the supplier will engrave them. So I tried to do something that was like super high quality and like a little dainty, not like the big wooden camp beads that everyone has. So yeah, it's very unique, and I am so excited to wear them rock climbing uh, because I was oh yes. climbing costume things. I will do uh, just camp person, like camp half blood stuff. So I'm super jazzed to have these beads that aren't going to clank around and get in my way. So love it. I cannot speak highly enough of. Breeze work. It is so beautiful. I've been waiting to get a Camp Oof. Half-Blood shirt or a necklace or anything like for real, for real, y'all. You should you should go check out her stuff and get that. You should also check out our merch because we have stickers. We, we haven't woo. mentioned cool in a while, but we do coming. have merch. It's on the podcast website. We also have a website. Free shipping. Yes. I love except it. For, I'll have to get stickers for, for my iPad because Ooh, I... I it pins down already. <laughs> I thought that's what uh, happened with the pins. Well, I actually, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to just make the pins more expensive, and in the description, note that shipping is included because even though they're really light, they're they they are they're too thick too to be thick. an envelope, so they are considered a package, which means shipping them is more expensive than you'd think it would be. So if you want a oh, pin, it's probably wonder- five bucks for. The mm-hmm. smallest package. Like yep. Yeah. Yeah. So ridiculous. if you're looking at it's if size. you want to buy a pin and you're wondering why is that so expensive, that's why. But you can also buy stickers. At this point, we should have the newest Bunker 9 Patreon art sticker, which we're so mm-hmm. it's holographic. It's very cool. We don't make our own stuff. We don't have that skill set. We order ours from a website. Absolutely. So if you want stickers made by the person who made them, you should go to Disbeans. <laughs> Speaking of, can I get Again, my stickers, stickers are very my water bottle? Yes. Yeah, my stickers are very specific to like my artwork and then like I have a couple basic cabin stickers. So that's so good. Yeah, check it out, check it out. Nice. It's all there. I think uh that's plenty of plugs for everybody to go around. Free Absolutely. Muses of Mytho- or patreon.com forward slash muses mythology. <laughs> Do not forget, go to our Patreon. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff on there, okay? Yeah, you very know very proud of you- a lot of shit on there. Yeah, if you actually set up a Patreon, we send you a thank you letter that has art on it. Um, we also send you a sticker. Like, you'll get a yeah. sticker free. Just make sure you actually put in your address so I can send you something. The last couple patrons haven't. So, like, do you... Some people hey, if you're a patron stuff, and you're listening know. and you never got a thank you letter, message me on Patreon and we'll double check and see if it's because that information can filled out. Uh, that's mm-hmm. all. Okay, we're leaving for real now. Bree, thank you so much for joining us. This was so fun. It was an absolute honor to have you. Thank you, Darian. Thank you, DJ. I had the best time on this podcast, and I hope to be on more. I really appreciate oh. all the time that you took explaining the myths to me. This has oh. been amazing. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. absolutely. We will absolutely hit you up in the future for, for other myths and let you pick other fun things. We're going to pivot to Norse mythology pretty soon, so absolutely. a new frontier a for us all to explore. I'm going to play the God of War games this time for sure. The new ones, which are in <laughs> Norse mythology. It's a vow. <laughs> Just like I'm gonna read Song of Achilles before I have we a talk PS5. about Achilles. I I should play Ragnarok on it. But you're gonna play Spider Man instead. I'm gonna play Spider Man as well. You but are I'm playing Spider Man. Play... Yeah, yeah. At this point, when this episode is coming out, I am probably playing Spider Man. 
Thank you all so much for listening. We will be back in your ears next week to talk about Prometheus. That's right. DJ reminded me that I used to do this, so I'm going to yeah. do it again. <laughs> Until next time, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Muses of Mythology is created and hosted by Darren and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darren Smart. The show is produced by Darren and DJ Smart, as well as Tim O'Connor, The Crystal Con Man, Nicholas Miller. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hay. And our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her at on Instagram at bombshell nutshell art. Want more Muses and Mythology? Support the show on Patreon. Just $1 gets you exclusive bonus content. Get more at patreon.com forward slash Muses of Mythology. You can also support the show by leaving a review at lovethepodcast.com forward slash Muses of Mythology. Or tell a friend why you love the show. Don't forget to check out all of our episodes and episode transcripts at musesofmythology.com. Thanks for listening.